for instance, we went Q12. And so they were like, oh my gosh, these people went Q12. They got, you know, a $17,500 bonus, year end bonus, you know. So people are looking at us thinking, we made it. Like, yeah. look at them. That's that's awesome. I want to be them. Yep. But what they don't know is Jason didn't have a job. I wasn't making a lot of money. We were maxing out credit cards. Our marriage was, you know, we had just gotten married and it was not even a great marriage from the start. We got evicted from our apartment. We, you know, had to move in with his family. This was all in the span of us requalifying Q12 because we literally didn't have the team to do. Hey, welcome to my channel. My name is Crystal. If you're new here, welcome. This is my channel where I talk about my experience while I was in Amway through an organization called LTD or Leadership Team Development. I was in for about a year and eight months and these are just my reflections on my experience while I was in and how I feel now that I'm out. Uh, since making this channel, I've been able to network and meet other people who are also in LTD, but also in different organizations such as Brit Worldwide and Worldwide Dream Builders. Today, I get to speak with Anna, who was in LTD for about six years, and her interview is very interesting. Uh, so I would say sit back, grab some popcorn, and hear what she has to say about going platinum and Q12 in the six years while she was in LTD. This is gonna be a two-parter, so this is part one and come back after the video and I'll tell you more about when part two will drop as well as different ways to um, share your experience if you want to and also contact the FTC to file a grievance like I did. <laughs> uh, so I'll see you after the video. Well, hey, Anna, thank you Hello. so much for joining us. Um, I have been looking forward to just talking to you and it's been a pleasure to meet you and just get to know more about you. Um, so welcome, welcome so much. We're thank just you. excited. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm excited too. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> of course. So tell us your name, your background, a little bit about what you did, you know, let us have it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, my name is Anna. Um, I have a background in uh, fitness. So currently I am a trainer, like a group fitness trainer, personal trainer um, at an all women's gym, which is super awesome and rewarding. And I'm the manager there as well. So we've been open since May. So I've been doing that um, for, for a while, but I've always kind of had my foot in fitness. It's kind of been my, my passion and I've loved it. Um, I live in Nashville, so I just moved here a little over a year ago. So it's still relatively new. It's home, but it's, um, it's been great. And, um, yeah, so I, I moved here. I originally was from Chicago. And so that's actually when I was in Chicago, is actually where like my um, Amway journey started. So I was a part of Amway um, through uh, LTD. So leadership team development, um, which I'm, I think you were as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, I mean, I grew up in Chicago. I was born and raised, you know, in, in the suburbs of Chicago. So um, it was home for 28 years. And then uh, after everything kind of shifted with the business, I was like, you know what? I need a fresh start. And I kind of just picked up everything, moved across the country, moved south and um, have been here ever since. So um, it's been, it's been amazing as far as, uh, as far as Nashville, it's really fun. So. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm glad you had a yeah. smooth transition from Chicago to Nashville. I've heard really awesome things about Nashville actually. So I'm glad that it's if been. If you've never been, I always recommend, I always recommend at least come for a weekend. You know, there's not a, Chicago is different. There's so much to do in Chicago. Nashville is mm -hmm. like a little bit differ in that sense. It's smaller, but we're still fun. <laughs> For sure. So you were in LTD in Chicago. So how long were you in? How did it all start? Um, I guess, yeah. tell me a little bit about what was going on in your life when you actually got sponsored. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. So, um, I was actually in for six years. Um, so it was, yeah, so it was a big chunk of my life. And honestly, like it was a really big chunk of like my, um, 
young adult life, you know? So when I, when I got started, when I got introduced to the business, so I was fresh out of college. I went to school um, at Elmhurst. It was college at the time. Now it's Elmhurst University. I'm about 30, 45 minutes outside of the city. Um, and I graduated college, four-year degree, um, got my degree in sport management, kind of pursued uh, at the time I, I was a collegiate soccer player. I actually was, um, getting conditioned and kind of trying out professionally as well. So that was a really, yeah. So that was a really main focus at that time for me. Um, so I had to kind of find a job that allowed me to be able to have the time to do that. And so I started working as a soccer coach now, <laughs> With being a soccer coach, um, it kind of comes with the territory that you're not going to make a lot of money. And I knew that going into it, it's not a job where like, honestly, for most people, it's not their full-time career unless they're like a director or they are um, like the youth director or women's director or whatever it is. Uh, normally part-time coaches. Now I had four teams. I mean, it was, it was part-time, but it was a, it was a big part-time job. Um and normally part-time coaches have like another income or another thing that they're doing. And so I graduated college. I started working um, at a really well-known club in St. Charles. And um, I loved it. It was great. And it just wasn't making me a lot of money. I had to move back home. It was kind of one of those things like you think that you're going to get this big, you know, job and all this income. And it just like wasn't like that. So... <laughs> I was 23. I was living at home and I was just kind of figuring out like, what are my next steps? What am I going to do? What, um, what do I want to do? Like, where, where do I want my career to go? Um, and what do I want that to look like? And that is when I actually met, um, my ex and he had already been part of the business for about a year. So we met at a, at a restaurant. He was the server. My mom was like, Oh my God, that server's cute. You should talk to him. So on and so forth. We ended up exchanging numbers, started dating and, um, were together for three years, married for three years. So we were basically a part of each other during my entire time of being in Amway. And so, um, when we met, I was 23. I was in that state of mind where I was looking for something, whether that was like another part-time job or something else that I could take on my plate. Um, but my passion at the time was soccer. So it wasn't my main focus of whatever I was going to do. And so he ended up introducing me to the business because he was in the business for about a year before I even knew him. Now, he wasn't necessarily super high in the business. I don't don't think at the time he had anybody part of his team. Um, and I was walking into just kind of paint a picture. I was walking into an atmosphere that was kind of dead in the water. Um, there wasn't a lot of growth. There wasn't a lot of, um, they kind of were going through a really fresh start in their team. Okay. And so when I got started, it was, I was very excited. I'm an extremely motivated person. Um, I'm, I'm a Taurus. I'm hard headed. I, if somebody <laughs> tells me not to do something, I'm going to do it. I'm going to figure out a way to do it. And that's just always been my mentality, good or bad. Um, it's always kind of been how I I've operated and, so with that, um, he introduced me to the business and how he did that was very smart, um, in, in my opinion, because, and, and here's why he, he didn't have me see the business plan right away, because I think if I did that, I don't know if I would have gotten started oh. to be totally honest. Mm -hmm. Um, I, it was, I just don't think I would have understood it quite as well. And I think I would have been like, I don't know if this is for me. Um, so the way that he did it was he just was like, Hey, um, I I'm in this business. I would love for you to meet the people that I'm working with. I would love for you to meet my mentors. Um, and so we just went out to dinner. Like he just introduced me to his mentors and we grabbed dinner, the four of us, um, and just started talking. They got to know me. Um, they were asking me a bunch of questions. It was the first time that truthfully, I like sat down at a dinner and they were like invested in me, like learning about me wanting. And now 
six years later, I understand why, but (laughs) me as a naive 23 year old, I'm like, whoa, they're really interested in me. This is cool. (laughs) You You know, so much of me. (laughs) I know. I'm like, thank you. Right. And so, um, I was, you know, all about it. And then I remember leaving that dinner and I'm like, holy moly, like they're really cool people. Like I could see myself working with them. Right. And then that's when they were like, okay, you need to come see the business plan. And so after I'd already met them and developed that connection, that's when they introduced me to the plan and they actually showed me what Amway was. And at that point, I honestly was already a yes because of how they did that. And I think if it was reversed, I don't know. I don't know if I would have said yes. I think I might've walked in and been like, uh, this yeah. doesn't really seem like it's something that's up my alley or something that I would be good at. Um, so I got started and, or I at least like I, I was interested. I kind of let them know that, um, this was something that I wanted to do now, right after I got started, what like legitimately, I think like the next weekend was summit, like a ginormous oh, conference, like one of the wow. biggest conferences. Uh-huh. Yes. So I saw the business plan and I ended up staying for like one of their trainings, which technically like you're not supposed to do when you first see the plan. Um, But I remember sitting there and they were like, okay, who all is going to summit? And every, it felt like at the time everyone stood up in the room and I was like the only one that did it. And I'm like, okay, what is this? Like, what, what's going on? You know, and my intrigued brain was kind of like, I want to, I want to see what else is, what else is out there with this. Um, so I ended up not getting registered right away, going to the conference. I spent like $120 to get my ticket, went to the conference for summit. And I ended up, I had actually like soccer games that weekend. So it would, it happened to be in an area where I could drive back and forth. And so I drove to the conference drove back from my soccer games, drove back to the conference and like made that commitment because honestly, like I just was, I I was wanting to learn. Like I was kind of in that mindset of like wanting to see what else was out there. And so I was intrigued. Um, I think so right after that, go ahead. I, I, that's a really good point because I remember when I was in, they would let people buy conference tickets to go to the conference first before actually getting sponsored. Yes. And they made it feel like, oh, well, we're going to want to send out a special invitation to you because you're just so special. Right. And we want you to just be a part of our environment, which that looking back, they just wanted a ticket. Like they just wanted you to buy a ticket. Yes. So yeah. I just think that that's interesting. And that's how kind of yours went. Yeah. And come to find out with Amway is like, that's actually super illegal for them to do. Like they really shouldn't do that. You like, I don't think nowadays you can get started in like LTD without having an IBO number. Back in the day, you, you used to be able to put in like zeros into your IBO number for like LTD. And that's how they would do that. So they would sign you up first in LTD, you can get your conference ticket and then you can get registered as an IBO with Amway. That's how I got started. And so coming back and like looking back on it, I'm like, that was really shady. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't Absolutely. think that they should do that, you know, but mm-hmm. it's, um, it's a total level of like love bombing on you. And it's like, uh, totally what you said, you're special. You are important. We want you to be there. It's cool. You know, like they make it seem like it's, um, this once in a lifetime thing that you're going to miss out on. Come to find out it's something that you do every single year. And it's like, but but multiple times a year, because conference, we have four years. It was like four (laughs) years. Yeah. And it's like, you made it seem like I was going to miss out on the best thing that's ever happened, you know, and that's not the case whatsoever. Um, so I ended up getting started after that. Um, I was excited. A lot of it had to do with like, um, truthfully, I was dating this guy. We just started dating. I was kind of figuring out things with him too. And then he introduced me to this business. I felt like, If I said no, I would kind of lose him as well. Like there was a mix of both of those. And I was like, you know what? Why not give it a try? Well, I ended up, I was living at home at the time. And I ended up going to my parents and being like, so 
um, I got started in this business. I would love for you to support me. And they were like, what business? And I told them it's Amway because I had no idea like that we weren't supposed to say that at the time. And so I was like, oh, it's Amway. Mm -hmm. And my dad like immediately looks up Amway on his phone and goes, you're not doing that business. Oh, wow. And it was like, not going to happen. Shouldn't do it. Red flags. I'm reading things about it. And again, good and bad. I'm a Taurus and I'm extremely stubborn. And <laughs> him saying that to me was like, I'm a grown adult. I'm going to do it anyway. And I was trying, you know, like, um, I'm probably going to have kids and they're going to do that to me. And I'm going to be like, what the heck? Because I am, you know, foreshadowing it. But at the time I was 23, I was fresh out of college. I just kind of, I had freedom and then I had to go back home. And so it was kind of like, nah, I'm going to do this and I'm going to see how it works. Um, so fast forward, right? So I, I get, I get started. I start developing customers, my, my parents, and honestly, like my family didn't support me for the first, like, year, maybe like less than a year as far as like buying products. So I had to really like develop things on my own, like go out there, grab new customers, talk to people about the business because I didn't really have the support at home. And I have a question. So were yeah. you sponsored under your ex-boyfriend or were you guys? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So we were still, we were dating at the time and we, um, so he was my sponsor throughout the whole, the whole thing. Um, so the, the guy that I talked that got me started, he ended up being the guy that I married and we were together for, for six years. So we got, I got started underneath of him and he was actually directly sponsored by, um, a couple that actually went diamond in the business. And so we were pretty much a direct sponsorship to an LTD diamond. Um, yeah. So he met um, the upline and at like a sunglass hut and like, that's how they met. So they, they like exchanged numbers. It was super random. Um, but they, my ex, his name's Jason. He got personally sponsored underneath the, that upline. And then I got personally sponsored underneath Jason. So, yeah. Um, so fast forward, you know, I had just gotten started. I was kind of doing my own thing. Well, like I was this young single because they, they consider you single until you've gotten married. Um, so I was young and single and I was a, a female in this business. And I truthfully was like kind of making it work and like doing things and making it happen because it's, it's kind of my personality. I don't mind talking to people. I like to have conversations. Like I kind of ended up being pretty decent at the business and, um, at, and that's why, like what I said in the beginning was really important of like, I came in when things were kind of dead in the water. Mm. And so they latched on to like my story and like, I was all that they talked about. I was like this bad to the bone, single chick, doesn't have support from their family, making it happen. Doesn't matter. Doing the thing like love bombing to the max. Um, when I first got in, they were telling my story of how I traveled back and forth from sock from my soccer games to summit over and over and over again. I, I was going into meetings, having people like come up to me and be like, Oh my God, are you Anna? You're the person that they've been talking about. And like, when I'm like, three, four months in the business, like people really shouldn't even know who I am, you know? And I went um, 310, which is three personally sponsored legs and 10 total people on your team. And that's kind of um, like a stepping stone in their way of doing things. I went 310 
fairly quickly in the business. So that was another thing that they talked about and they love bombed on it. And they were like, this single chick is making it. I mean, she, she came in, she's gone three ten and six months and you all are making this too hard yep. and like utilizing me as a way to like bump up their team. Well, my ego is through the roof at this <laughs> point. Right. And it's, you know, and it's, and that's all part of their agenda, but my ego is through the roof at this point. I'm like, yeah, keep talking about me. This is great. You know, and I kind of use that as like a way to talk to my family too. Like I was like, listen, I'm doing this thing. They are talking about me. They're making it, ha- you know, I'm making it happen. I'm getting recognized. I'm doing this stuff, like trying to get my family to understand like, that I was excited about this and like, it was working, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, so that aspect kept me in, in honestly a time where like, I probably would have quit on it. Mm -hmm. And because it was new, it was different. Um, I was getting so much rejection, right? Because you, when you get, when you get started, the very first thing that they have you do is they have you like download your contact list. I don't know if you had to do this too. They make you download your contact list and then literally reach out to every single person, whether or not they want to be a customer or a person in the business. And I was sending messages to people that I hadn't spoken to in like 15 years, 10 years and asking them about a business opportunity, you know? And so I, I was like, I would be in the middle of like a, what they call like a phone team. And I'd be reaching out to people and I'm like, Ooh, I don't know, like if I want to reach out to that person. And then they would give me this big spiel about like how, you know, a yes is good as a no. And like all this stuff and, you know, kind of, force it on you to, to end up reaching out to them. And I would get people that would just blast me and be like, why are you reaching out to me? This is shady. Like, you know, just like bad. I mean, don't contact me ever again. I don't understand what you're in. Like, um, so as a 23 year old, that's been in the business for four months, five months at this point, reaching out to these people, I probably would have quit Mm -hmm. because there is no point in like why I would have been doing that if there wasn't any sort of recognition behind it or like um, a praise behind it or like a benefit for me. And what that was that was keeping me in was like the love bombing and like the recognition and the, um, you know, the, the, importance and me feeling like I was important. And so I'm like, okay, screw them. Then I am doing this thing because clearly what I'm doing is awesome and I got to keep going. So that at that time kept me going. Mm. And I ended up going, um, silver. Yeah. So 7,500 points for the first time. And like, thank you. Because that is not easy to do. (laughs) No, no, it is not easy to do at all. But I ended up going silver, um, like 16 months after I got started. Really? Yes. Yeah. So I, um, I got started. I kind of like my upline to, like I said, our diamonds now in the business latched onto me. And they were like, I was at everything that they invited me to. I went to everything. They asked me to go to everything. I was over at their house all the time. I was having dinners. I was important. And like, quote unquote, right. And um, that was big for me. And so I kind of kept moving through the pins, kept moving through the pins. And I'm like, I mean, I had a decent amount of people. I didn't have a ton and we were all young. We were all, you know, naive and we made a call and basically it was, Hey, um, we haven't had somebody go 7,500 points in a very long time because everything was kind of dead in the water and they kind of did a, a restart. We need something like this. We need a single lady, 
coming in, making it happen. Let's let's do this. And so that was kind of their their speech to my team of let's rally. Let's make this happen. Let's have Anna go 7,500 points. And so we did. Um, and the recognition just went even higher at that point. Like I was a single lady, silver in 16 months. No one has, you know, no one's done that in years. Like who is this chick? What's going on? And so that's when I started getting recognized, like across LTD Oh wow! and like, being asked on stages at conferences, being um, like swarmed at conferences. And then, you know, my upline, like bringing me over to other diamonds and like, you know, just like things like that, um, that it's extremely hard for someone to go into something that, they're like, I don't know if I'm going to be good at this and then have that happen and then just walk away. And so it kept me in, you know, it was like, people always say, dang, how were you in for six years? And you didn't see something happen, you know? And like, so that's kind of where I'm coming from when explaining the stories. Like, that's why I was in for so long is there's stepping stones to how you can get sucked in for six years, 10 years, 15 years of your life and not even, not even realize it. You know what I mean? I think that that's a really interesting statement because when I interviewed Michelle Garabito, she said the exact same thing. She said that the reason why she stayed in for so long was because of all the recognition. She said her head was so big. Everyone knew her name. She was like a celebrity. She'd walk in yeah. rooms and would swarm her. She said that that was the major reason why she stayed in for as long as she did, even though there were red flags, even though there were things that were completely wrong. Totally. She was like, I'm kind of like famous. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm going to just deal with it. Exactly. But that's interesting. And they, I think that they do that to um, a point because it's like, there's a re there's a reason behind everything that they, that they do. Right. Because I think truthfully, right now that I'm out of it, now that, you know, it's been a year and a half since I've been a part of the business that I, I it's like, they know when they have a good person. Mm -hmm. Right. You can kind of tell even in anything that you do. Right. You you work at a job, you hire someone, you're like, that's a good person. Like yeah. they got it down. They have a work ethic. They got things going for them. And Amway's the same way. So when an upline has somebody like that, um, so when an upline has somebody like that, right, they latch onto them and then they love bomb them. They recognize them because I think that they know that that good person, if they don't do that, is going to realize what's going on behind the scenes because they're smart and say, mm, I don't know if this is a good idea. Mm. And so they take those people and just give them everything they got so that they can be successful. And then that way it's like, oh, I can't leave now because I'm being recognized and I'm famous and I'm being talked about and I'm important. And it's like, so you ignore all of that stuff. You ignore the red flags. You ignore the things that you should be because you feel important. And that is something that is so freaking shady it's just like when you think about that um you really are like dang i got caught you know i got i got caught in the freaking trap you yep. know and yep. you think that you're going to be smart enough not to but but um and you just do and that's the thing i don't mean to interrupt you but no you're good we all feel like i would never get caught up in that but there's mind games that go into um, 
catching you, you know what I mean? Getting caught up in all of these things. Like there are psychological things that they do that make you stay yeah. and even make you want to join. I mean, making you feel like you're a part of this elite group and oh me, you know what I mean? There's just, there's so many things, even 100%. to the person who's talking to somebody and they were saying how um, sleep deprivation is a tactic, you know, it's a tactic that they use yes. so that you're not really thinking properly about what's going on. So oh my I, gosh, yes, I agree with it being a tactic. Yeah, it's, it's, there's so many tactics, right? And, you know, the, I think um, there are different stages of your career in Amway and kind of the tactics that they use to keep you in. Um, Because I was in for so long, I had those, those ups and downs, right? Like I wasn't always recognized in that sort of light that I was in when I first got started. And so that tactic of like the sleep deferation is a real thing. You know, I went through that stage as well. And then, you know, the tactic of religion, I went through that stage as well, you know? And so, um, there's definitely stages, but when I was in and I went silver, the the stage I was in was, they were just love bombing me on recognition. And like, I was becoming famous and I was, you know, I was the same way. I would go to conferences and people would know who I am and they would come up to me and they'd be like, what are you doing? Tell me everything. And I'm like, I have no idea. I, like nine times out of 10, I was like, I listened to my upline, you know, like I, I was in for 16 months. How am I supposed to know, you know, what I was 24 years old, 20, you know, 23, 24 years old. Like, I don't know how to run a business. I don't know what I'm doing. And um, they would come up to me. Oh my God, tell me everything. What are you doing? What's going on? And um, so fast forward from there, right? So I went silver um, in 16 months and I like that entire year. I was being talked about at every single conference. I was being talked about at every single meeting. I was being used as examples. I was being, um, I would do like team meeting stuff. I would do, I mean, things that like people who've been in for 16 months just would never do. Right. And so um, we kept growing from there. So at that time, my upline, um, they were Q12 um, rubies in the business. And um, when I went silver, they already had a leg that was um, a platinum leg. So we were like their second second leg. So they had a really long time ago, they had a leg that had gone platinum. That leg fell back. Then about a year or two before I joined in, they had a leg that went platinum. And kind of, I think like stage just so you weren't really growing. Um, and then I got started. And so my upline was like, shoot, you know, we can make a run to go Emerald. Um, because they already had that one organization that was pretty much a platinum leg. They had that previous organization that was still kind of around, but like hovering around like 4,000, 5,000 points and just like never really pushed to go 7,500. And then they had me and Jason. Oh. in our team that had just gone silver and um they were like we could do this let's do this like we got this let's go plat you know let's go emerald mm -hmm. and that was my hook line sinker to like why was it for so long um was i got attached to their emerald and then diamond ship and I, as a person, um, felt like they had invested so much into me at that point that I'm like, I want to do them a favor with all that they've done for me. Yeah, girl, it's a real thing. <laughs> That's real because I remember my yeah. upline coaches would say that they'd be like, well, my upline platinums have done so much for me. And the least I could do is something. I'm just like, girl, you paying to be here. Like, what are you talking about? But that, yeah, but it's, that is what kind of kept you in. Yes, totally. Because they, they make it seem like, well, you wouldn't have gone 7,500 if it wasn't for me, you know, like you wouldn't have done this if I didn't come in and help you out, which could or could not be true. Right. right. Like mm -hmm. I could have maybe figured it out and then it would have taken me longer or 
I couldn't have and I would have stayed stuck, right? You never really know, but they utilize that as like, hey, we helped you. We did all this stuff for you. Now let's kind of return the favor. You're going to help us go Emerald. Mm -hmm. And so we took the team that we had, um, which again, a ton of young people, like my age and younger, right? They're living at home, don't really have jobs, um, you know, thinking that they're going to get rich off of Amway type group. Um, (laughs) And we kind of did the the rally thing again. And we're like, we are going to be part of their emerald ship. Let's make it happen, you know? And um, we did. So we we rallied, right? And we, we made it happen, okay? And so during that time, um, Jason and I were- I just want to say to those that yeah. don't know, that's really hard to do. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It is. It is. And I, I will definitely paint that picture. It is, it is extremely hard to go 7,500 points once in the business one time. Okay. Let alone doing it. So when you, when they say you're going to go platinum, it means that you're going 7,500 points for six out of 12 months of the year. Okay. 7,500 points in Amway is 22,500. So in my Amway business that month, there was $22,500 I had gone through the business. Okay. What? <laughs> yes. To paint that picture. All right. Cause every $3 that's spent in Amway is equivalent to one point. And so when you go $7,500, 7,500 points, that means over $22,000 was put into your Amway business. So that is why one, it's extremely hard to do and you have to have a team to do it. And two, um, Amway recognizes you and people recognize you because that is not an easy feat to actually accomplish. So when we win 7,500 points, um, it, you know, it's a big deal. And then they were like, let's do it. We're going to go Emerald. We're going to have this team. We're going to make it happen. You're a bunch of young bucks. Let's do it. And so it's like, and I say it like that because that's literally how it was told to us, like, mm-hmm. let's rally, let's make it happen. You know, it was kind of like a team. And coming from a background in soccer where, like, I only knew being in a team, I'm like, mm-hmm. heck yeah, let's do it, you know? And so that mentality kind of came out in me where I'm like, we're a team, we're doing this thing together. Um, And so I'll kind of explain the process throughout, but fast forward, we did it. So our team, and it was, it was technically at the time, Jason and I did combine businesses um, because we were either engaged or like about to be engaged. So they were like, let's just combine your businesses and kind of make you guys one. Um, And which I have mixed feelings about um now that say, I'm out like, of it. <laughs> I want to hear about the relationship like did you yeah sure to get married like how did that oh, go totally and a lot of it was because of the fact that we were going emerald and doing this run and um we're kind of like the it young couple mm-hmm. um he kind of got latched on to my business. And I say that very, like, he got latched on to my business. And um, I had a little bit of reservation about that because I felt like I was doing what I needed to do. And then this guy that I just happened to be dating, which Looking back, I would say, I loved him. It was amazing. But, you know, it really wasn't. <laughs> and it, it was this guy that just kind of, I happened to be dating. And then he gets latched onto my business. And then all of a sudden, we're this, like, couple. And we are doing it together. And, like, he didn't really have anybody outside of me. Like, he maybe had one or two people. But, like, it was realistically, like, my team. And... Honestly, that was like 
the beginning of the end of our relationship because my team did see it as my team and they never really looked at him like a leader. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was really hard on us because I would kind of turn into like the leader of our relationship when it came to the business, Mm -hmm. but that goes against everything that the business tells you to do. Yes. I was going to say it's so heavily like male focused, especially when it comes to couples, the man is expected to be the leader. So how did that affect the dynamics of your relationship with you being recognized as a leader by your team? Yeah, it was hard. Um, And I think a lot of it, you know, my ex, he, I don't know, I have not spoken to him since the divorce. Um, He, uh, I don't know if it's gotten better, but he had a very bad ego. And I think when things were kind of developing, like we were going Emerald and we were helping them out. And a lot of it was like, they were relying on, like my, our upline was relying on me to like do it. He slowly, I think started to develop like resentment to that. And resentment turned into ego that turned into like, I'm the male, you need to like, listen to me and it was forced and it was like you know what I mean like that's kind of where our relationship started to turn was I um I love my mom my mom is amazing um but she very much uh she had a lot of like dad issues and she carries that. Mm -hmm. And so she raised us as like, ain't no man going to tell you what you're going to do. And there are good and bad things about that, right? Like it's, you know, who run the world girls, but you also have to find a partner. And, you know, my mom's married. My parents are still together. They've been together for 30 plus years and they have a great marriage, but like you still have to find a partner. And so, when he was getting that resentment, I was turning into like, this is my team. You're not going to tell me what to do. And we butted heads a lot with that. Um, what did your uplines, your upline now diamonds say about that? Did they notice that? Did they say like, hey, this is really her team? Like, what did they say? Or, hey, he's in charge? Or... Honestly, like, they didn't really say much. Um, I don't know if they knew to the extent what was going on behind the scenes, but I think that them included with our team knew that it was, it was me taking the the charge. And, um, I think everybody kind of knew that. I think, uh, my, our uplines, like other teams kind of knew that too. Like, I think it was just kind of a well-known thing. And, if you take out the equation that like he was my, you know, fiance or boyfriend, wherever the timeline is, um, I think any, if you kind of like take a step back, I think anybody can understand that that's probably very hard on a dude Mm -hmm. to like accept that Mm -hmm. and, um, just go like, that's fine. I, and like, and, and I think he had a hard time with that. Like he didn't just lay back and go, okay, you take the reins. It was like, no, I'm going to take the reins, but then I'm like, I'm not going to let you. And then it was kind of like that back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's really where like our relationship took a big turn, mm-hmm. um, was because truth be told, I think that it just, looking back on our marriage and I, I, if he was sitting here, I think he would say the same thing. Um, we brought out the worst in each other. It just turned into, it turned into us bringing out the worst in each other. It was, he just got such a bad ego, but then it turned into like resentment. And then it turned into like him not ever really having a job. And then it was like, his ego was so big that he would only accept certain positions that he thought he was worthy of. But then it turned into like, he basically didn't work for a majority of our relationship. And it was like, 
it was affecting every single aspect of his life that like he felt like he wasn't it was an ego thing but I think it was he just felt like he wasn't worthy he just felt like it he wasn't good enough you know Mm -hmm. and it turned negative like his his deflection of it turned into an ego if that makes sense I understand um and so, so I feel guys, for him and that. Like so we, we, when we got um, engaged, we were living separately. When I went 7,500 points like silver for that 16 months. And then when we, when we started our Emerald ship, I was living by myself. I had my own apartment. I had my own job. I was doing my own thing, making it happen. Um, and he was living with his parents. And then we got engaged kind of like, not forcefully, but hey, you guys are going platinum. It might be a really good idea for you to just be a married couple. Um, They said that in not, you know, in not so many words, but that was basically what it was. And we, so we got engaged, we got married and we moved into an apartment. It was a janky hole in the wall apartment, but it was our first place. You know, it it was what it was. He wasn't making a lot of money. I was making okay money. You know, we just kind of made it work. Well, in that apartment was when we went um, platinum and Q12. So we were finishing up our platinum run Mm -hmm. and then starting our q12 run i'm trying to think of timeline no i think that i'm pretty sure i was i think we went platinum when i was in my own apartment and we were going q12 and finishing up q12 when we got married So we were engaged during the platinum run, engaged during that time, was getting married as we were going Q12. And so um, for people, for viewers that don't know, Q12 is going that 7,500 points for now, 12 out of 12 months, which is even harder. (laughs) And so we, um, yes, it's all coming back to me. We got married and qualified Q12 in the same month. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. So, okay. Yeah. And so we, and then my, our upline qualified founders Emerald that same month. So it was like, it was a big month. It was a big yep. ordeal. Mm-hmm. You know, Jason and Anna are going Q12 while they're getting married, you know, again, with the love bombing and doing all that stuff. Um, recognition to the max, getting recognized by... So like big name things were happening to us during that time. So we were in our apartment, got married, qualified Q12, all that stuff, spent the next year trying to re-qualify in that janky apartment. And that is where crap hit the fan Um, because what people don't realize is it's all a tinted view. Um, when you are getting recognized, and I don't, I realize this now because I went through it than somebody who didn't. Um, when you go through it and you know what sacrifices you had to make, your team had to make, the amount of money people spent, all of that stuff, you realize how much they the recognition recognition part of the Amway is bull poop. Okay. Like all of it. I mean, because of the fact that um they will recognize people. I mean, for instance, we went Q12. And so they were like, oh my gosh, these people went Q12. They got you know, a $17,500 bonus, year on bonus, you know. So people are looking at us thinking, we made it. Like, yeah. look at them. That's that's awesome. I want to be that. Yep. But what they don't know is Jason didn't have a job. 
I wasn't making a lot of money. We were maxing out credit cards. Our marriage was, you know, we had just gotten married and it was not even a great marriage from the start. We got evicted from our apartment. We, you know, had to move in with his family. This was all in the span of us requalifying Q12 because we literally didn't have the team to do it. But it was all a status. It was all smoke and mirrors. So you didn't have it. It was all smoke and mirrors. Right. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Anna. Leave your comments below. How did you feel about her experience? Would you want to go platinum in Q12 after hearing that? Um, I thought it was interesting, all the things she said about her marriage, um, <laughs> about them really being broke, even though they had such a high status. I'm not surprised though, because that tends to be the story that I'm getting from lots of people that I'm talking to and even interviewing. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that interview. If you would like to contact me, email me, my information is down below. If you leave a comment, I will reply to it. Um, so just <laughs> let me know what you think. And if you want to share your story, feel free to email me. Thanks to those who have been emailing me. Thanks to those that have just been sharing their story without wanting to be on my channel. Thanks so much just for um, just venting, you know, <laughs> letting us all know that we're not alone in the experience that we've gone through. Um, so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.